Hello everybody, this is JD again. Today we're going to talk about the environment and ecology. But before I do that, I want to talk about a foolish thing I heard. Trump went to some university and he's talking about a wall. Wall! China, the great wall of China! Yeah, China built a wall! Yes, they built a wall to protect them from the Mongols. Amazia. And if you check the last group of dynasties, they were the Mongols. The wall didn't work. To make a wall work, you have to put a force on there that will kill everybody who approaches the wall. If you want to see a wall that worked, it's the Iron Curtain under the Soviet Union. They put up the Iron Curtain, it didn't work. They put up towers, and every man, woman, and child that approached the area was shot. Plain and simple. It worked. A lot of people don't know there was a third wall. It was in England, about the United Kingdom. The Romans built a wall to keep the northern tribes from the Roman colonies that were south. That wall worked great as long as they had the Roman legions up there to kill anybody and everybody that approached that wall. Man, woman, or child. Didn't matter. But when the Romans cut back their legions and the locals had to deal, the wall didn't work. So unless we plan on putting towers up every 50, 100 feet and shoot everybody that approaches the wall, people learn from history. It don't work. The Great Wall of China did not work. The Mongols got in there and took over. Soviet Union, the Iron Curtain, as soon as the gods got off the walls, the walls came tumbling down. Great Britain, the Romans built a wall across the United Kingdom. As soon as the Romans left and stopped killing everybody, the wall caved in. Walls don't work. Of course, anyone with common sense with history and did a little research will figure that out. That's not ecology. Let's get to the ecology now. We're going to talk about the Keystone Pipeline. Whoa, wait, you said ecology. Let me tell you a little bit of this. The American Indians, you all consider a very ecological-minded group of people because they practice safe economical, I mean, uh, ecological, environmental procedures, environmental actions, environmental, they cared for their environment. But if they had to eat, they killed the animals. If they had to grow crops, they cleared the fields. Well, that's changing the environment. And they only cleared the fields that they needed. They only killed the animals they needed. Not till a white man got there and started killing buffalo just for their hides. And these had feasts for a while till the uh, buffaloes disappeared almost completely. So, when is man going to become environmental savvy? Well, we got the environmentalists there. Oh, hollering, yelling. Nothing, nothing, nothing. It's not going to work. Society can't accept nothing. If we all want to live in caves and throw rocks at each other, yes, then the environments can get up there and do their nothing, nothing. If society's going to work, we have to do it with the least evasive. Let me give you an example. Two wells, oil wells. We're going to use oil since the keystone. One on land, one in the Gulf of Mexico. Sooner or later, some of them are going to rupture. One on land ruptures, one in the Gulf of Mexico ruptures. I don't have to tell you much about the Gulf of Mexico. You know what happened with that one. How long before they could cap it off? How much oil was spilt into the Gulf? What the oil did? How it dispersed itself? And how it messed everything up? What happens when a well does exactly the same thing on land? It's squirting oil all up on the ground right there. Is it going anywhere? No, it's right there. They come in, they cap it off, they seal it off, and 
something in a day or two is done whereas Gulf of Mexico how long now let's talk about the pipeline we're gonna ship the human race is gonna ship oil around the world how we ship it will depend on what we want to do we could ship oil from Canada down the coast and send it off wherever we went but that's some of the most dangerous areas to ship shipping is bad in that area because of weather and the coast matter of fact you remember the Exxon Valdez the oil spill from that ship is still there why because we can't get to where the oil spill is we can't clean it up it's still there so shipping really is not environmentally sound especially in certain areas of the ocean the more we can stay away from shipping the better for the environment of oil now the environment says yeah no shipping well no shipping no 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 oil has to be moved so why am I for the Keystone pipeline one reason the environment that's it plain and simple our environment is protected better with the Keystone pipeline than a ship loading up in Canada and going down the coast why like that oil well on the ground Keystone pipeline springs a leak they can get to the spot where the leak is right away they can shut off the oil right away they can clean up the environment that had the oil dispersed very quickly repair the leak and continue on minimum minimal damage to the environment I didn't say none minimal whereas that well leaking in the Gulf of Mexico was catastrophic think about it if you were a true environmentalist you would see the truth to what I'm saying here and you would understand that of all the evils that we have the Keystone pipeline is the least evil it's just the way it is if you don't believe me how many times have we had to choose e the least evil of the evil? Heck, look at this candidates for president from the both Republican and Democrat Party. None of them are good. Which one is the least evil? The least damaging? I'm a presidential candidate and you don't even see me because I speak the truth to you. I tell you what is and let you decide. I told you the walls don't work like I did at the beginning here. I tell you the Keystone Pipeline is the least evasive to the environment than other alternate forms of oil transportation. Because we could use trains. Oh, could you see a train derailing in the Rockies? Oh. What a mess that would make. Huh? Well, how about one by the edge of the Grand Canyon? Or some of the other beautiful canyons on the rivers they run alongside. Imagine the mess that will make to the environment. You see, of all the forms of transportation for oil, the pipeline is the most least evasive it can be quickly found where it leaks it can be quickly repaired the area can be cleaned up and least amount of damage I'm not saying no damage depending where it leaks it will be more or less but it will be a lot less than a ship running aground on the rocky coast west coast in a storm where there's cliffs and ledges and where we can't get to.
clean it up properly. And so, like the Exxon Valdez oil, it sits there, dispersing itself little by little over the years. Eventually, it will wash away. Maybe. Or it'll get buried by sediment in time. And maybe a couple thousand years from now, somebody else will dig it up and say, Oh, I discovered an oil pocket. And it really is the Valdez <laughs> oil. So, people. Why am I for the Keystone Pipeline? One reason. The environment. I realize we must ship oil, and that is the least evasive of all forms of shipping of oil that we have. I mean, you could disagree, but I, I mean, your automobile has oil in it for lubrication. You get a wreck, it's right there. See, even that will disperse oil. And gasoline, you have fire, you got all kinds of things. You have a truck hauling oil down the interstate and it gets in a wreck <laughs> the mess that makes see look at it this way there's going to be a leak it's either going to be a ship off the coast where the oil gets to where we can't and the damage it does is immense and catastrophic or it's going to be the pipeline and we can get to it we can fix it, we can clean it up, so it's least evasive. It didn't do, it isn't non-damaging, it's least evasive. I'm sorry, gotta look at it real. Heck, American Indians looked at the way the environmentalists look at it today, they would have starved to death. Don't kill any buffalo, don't kill any deer, don't kill any bear, don't kill any animal. Don't make any crops. Don't grow any crops. You're changing the environment. You're taking wooded area and making it into farm area. <clears throat> the plains, you're taking the grasslands and making it into farmland where the buffalo can no longer... You see what I'm saying? So, we have to look at what we got, what we need, <clears throat> What is the best way <coughs> to handle our needs and the least evasive to the environment? The best thing we could do is convert almost all our fossil fuels to hydrogen fuels. Now there, it's very environmental friendly. Out of the water, for example, the ocean, you get hydrogen gas and you get oxygen. Dissipate the oxygen, or you can save the oxygen and take the hydrogen gas. Compress it to a liquid if you want, or leave it as gas. Use it to burn in place of fossil fuels. And as hydrogen burns, it combines with one other element, oxygen, to perform, to form H2O. Oh, that's water. It's recyclable. <clears throat> that's the way we should be going and we will in time <clears throat> especially if I become president when we conquer the energy of water the energy of the oceans that we have in other words the hydrogen we will have limited unlimited supply of energy in a total recyclable system. Every bit of hydrogen that we burn returns back as water. All we have to do is have clean machines. So, people, we can get rid of catalytic converters which will then clean up your cars, even cleaner. And we won't be putting out sulfuric acid, but we'll be putting out of the exhaust steam. Oh, that's H2O heated. Oh, that's water. <laughs> See? So yeah, converting to hydrogen would greatly, greatly improve our atmosphere. 
But until then, we still need to find out what is the best way for us to transport our fossil fuels. Ask the people in Canada about trains that fall off the track and spills their oil all over the place. It didn't work very well. Because you see, all that oil is dumped there. You can't shed it off, it's there. Whereas if it was a pipeline, you shed it off and you only get part of that oil, maybe one of the tanks. Okay? The transporting it through the pipeline, you don't have to put up with leaks. I mean, well, you got leaks. You don't have to put up with accidents. You don't have to put up with uncontrollable spills, because once a spill happens, you can control it by shedding everything off and fixing that spill. Mo the monitoring that will be done to prevent the leaks, because a leak would cost so much money just to clean it up alone. And the environmental friendly for our oceans, for our lands, because all the hazards would be maintained and kept within the pipeline arena and thus be able to be controlled better by us, the society that is right now extremely dependent upon fossil fuels. And I don't care who you are, if you drive a car, if you have a house that uses electricity, if you ride the bus, any of you, you all are dependent on fossil fuel. I'm not saying you're not doing your part by putting in solar panels. I'm not saying you're not doing your part by turning down your thermostat. I'm saying we are dependent. We try to reduce our dependency, but we are dependent. And the Keystone Pipeline, in my personal opinion, with everything I looked at, and I mean everything, is more environmental friendly than any alternative that has ever come up or did exist or has existed for transporting fuel, oil, from Canada to the Gulf of Mexico. Thank you for your time. This is JD, and that's my view and the reason why I am for the Keystone Pipeline. Environment, saving the environment, protecting the environment. These are the things we must do to the best of our ability. The Keystone Pipeline will do that better than any ship off the coast of the Pacific Ocean of North America. Thank you. Have a nice day.